Iranian clerics demand amputations and more executions of protesters. Recently, the Association of Qom Seminary Teachers, an influential hardliner group of clerics in Iran, demanded more blood and urged the authorities to use more inhumane measures against protesters. The association suggests that anyone who participates in anti-government protests to quote-unquote instigate fear in society should be treated as a belligerent. This is part of the charge known as Moharabe. Iran's Sharia laws treats belligerents as punishable by death, crucifixion, severance of limbs, and or exile. The clerics suggested that this, quote, the severing of fingers of one hand and of toes on the opposite foot could be an effective as a deterrent punishment if a person instigates fear in society without the involvement of the opposition media and without urging others to follow suit. They also claim that exiling, w exiling would be ineffective as they believe it would, quote unquote, ruin the image of Iran around the globe and the government will suffer the cost. Aside from intellectuals, politicians, and activists in Iran, some former officials and high-ranked clerics denounced these horrific acts. Well, I mean, this is very Quranic, though. This is exactly what the Quran teaches. Unlike what the, in the previous news, uh, this is completely in line with Islamic teaching. So if you're spreading corruption on earth, you're supposed to um, either be crucified or have your hands and feet cut off from you know opposite ends like your left hand right leg or um, the other way around so this is this is this is completely in line with the quran spreading corruption on earth yeah um mm -hmm. the only problem with the quran is that it doesn't specify what it means by spreading corruption on earth very so conveniently really, what do you mean yeah the problem i think that's kind of a feature <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that makes it up to you, basically, which is actually one yeah. of the major problems with the Quran. But um, I mean, I don't know what the what the people. By the way, this is this is in contradiction to the previous news that we have had because we had cer certain people from Gom coming in and complain. Like, remember, we had news that we had some religious leaders from Qom in Iran kind of voicing out their opposition to the government, right? And now well, we have straight up called Khamenei illegitimate and like railed him and Raisi for being yeah. don't not having the right credentials. Like they roasted the fuck out of them. But that yeah. was all anonymous. And so like it's questionable this... how authentic part of that was or how influential it actually was, you know? They might have we might have different scholars in Qom having different allegiances. Oh, that's definitely and... true. Yeah, so there's yeah. there might there might there's be competition. A... Yeah um that would i mean that would be in if they do that that would get a lot of international attention imagine if the protesters were captured and they had their hand you know hands and feet cut off that would be so barbaric that would be i mean they, I mean, were, we, they were amputating a guy's fingers like earlier but, this year but that was it for a theft that much, yeah it didn't get that much attention but they still yeah but that's this. different that's the, i mean I, I not that okay that's all barbaric okay but i think doing that to the protesters will have a major a different reaction i mean I that agree. got some reaction but this will get a lot more re reaction that's why i think that they won't do this which is weird because i think like um executing the um the protesters gets less of a reaction than if they were amputating them don't you agree um well, this is a hypothetical because I haven't seen it in real life, but I'm just guessing. I think it might get more of, I think it might get more of a reaction. I think you might be right because you're, we're, it, okay, this is a very, you know, like dark way of thinking, but let's go with me here. I think some elements of the general population will be like, okay, executing protesters. Well, they already shoot people dead in the streets. Like, okay, this is kind of in their character, da, da, da. But being like they started amputating their fingers and like hands and their limbs. Holy crap, that's midi. Mid okay, yeah. Susie, you got cut again. You muted your mic. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Yeah, that you're saying that's medieval. Oh yeah, that that was really weird. Um basically I was just saying that like it people it would be more shocking, perhaps. Mm. 
the amputation where it's like okay well they already killed people and ex ex execution isn't that much more surprising in in some ways do you do you understand what i'm saying yeah yeah i think it's i i, I mean it, executions are more barbaric because you're literally killing somebody i just think people are just not used to saying you you know i'm seeing amputation used as punishment and that's why it would be more shocking and it would get more re reaction i mm, I don't know if they would do that though. I don't think. I think that the, I mean there should be. They should be insane. To, they know how would that look internationally. So I think they would rather use executions than amputations. Yeah. So weird. the whole argument yeah. here from these clerics is that in Iran, a lot of murder charges or certain kinds of crimes are subject to qisas, which is like retribution like eye for an eye like literally there are incidents in iran where a woman was blinded in her justice that she inflicted upon the person who did that to her was to have him be blinded this is all legal and um the problem is with Kaisas is like that the victim or the victim's family fam all right so your idea is getting cut again so i'm going to read this thing by d God. which is um, which is actually a very good point. Do you think amputation amputation would leave dis disfigured people in view? Exactly. That's a that is a very very bad strategy by the government. Because imagine if you're you've protested, right, which makes you a hero, and then you're ar been arrested, which makes you an even bigger hero. Okay, and then you've been abused by the government, which makes you an even bigger hero, and now your hands or feet are going to be cut off. And you are left alive to for a constant reminder, um, li a living reminder for the people of how brutal the government is. Like you have a you have a hero that is not dead, a walking living hero that is his. The, the disfigurement is a constant remind a constant reminder to the people for why this guy is a hero, and why the government is evil. So when it comes to uh, PR, it would be the worst strategy for the government to cut, which is, I don't know why these idiots are recommending that because like PR wise, it's just like, I don't know why the, like, even if you think this is Islamic, I don't understand. Like, do they have no self-awareness about how bad this looks? They like, think that this is better than their system of exiling people. So Iran has a system of internal exile where like after maybe you serve some time in jail or depending on how things are sentenced, you're exiled into like different provinces than where you're from and you have to stay there for a period of time. Like Sohail Arabi right now, the atheist political Iranian political prisoner, he's in internal exile right now for the next like two years. And um, they said, or what's reported on is saying that exile would be totally ineffective in such cases they declared because such actions tarnish Iran's image in the international community and bear other costs for the government. So they some because you're when you're talking about oh do they have any awareness of the international image when it comes to asking for these kinds of things? Clearly they do because they are considering international media when they say stuff like oh well exile wouldn't be good because it would tarnish our image. And it would bear other costs to the government in that way. Da da da. I don't know how they come to the conclusion that amputations is preferable <laughs> if you're making well, those considerations. Um, yeah, I don't, they're, 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 they seem to be. I don't understand this. I don't understand. They there they must be idiots or something, or else, or is there something that we're not? They know that we don't know. Yeah. But go on. Oh, that was um the ends of my thoughts on this did, hmm. did you was there any other news stories from iran over the past two weeks because we haven't had a show in two weeks that you wanted to talk about there's one oh look then... at that look on your face that look on your face give it to me what is it what is it no you know which one i'm going to talk about but should we talk about it now or should we wait for more updates before we talk about it no, 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 no. Let's let's talk about it, and we can just we, what we do what we always do, and just give the preface of like this is what we know so far. That's okay, responsible. So this is, we can give that honestly. Okay. So, yes. Yeah, so this is what is being reported so far. Okay. Oh, uh, if it's not accurate, we will update you on this maybe next week. Okay. So <clears throat> there was a, a mullah who was okay. I don't even know how to start this. Is this, this is pretty shocking? Like. It, 
when in the Iranian atheist republics Persian Discord server, we were like, "What the hell is happening?" Um, there was a mullah who was be beaten the crap out of by the police in Iran <laughs> and arrested. Are beaten the crap out of and arrested and then hospitalized because of the way he was treated. Okay. So <laughs> cheer, cheer, <baba. laughs> So this the, the the mullah was in Qom, a mullah in Qom, which is the most religious city in Iran. Okay, so the most religious city in Iran. We have a mullah coming out and telling seeing a woman without hijab, and she, he harasses her telling her to put her put a hijab on and apparently the people around start attacking the mullah to and swearing at him to leave her alone let her be and then what happened is that the mullah calls the police they're like there's a woman without a hijab and she's not listening to me so she calls the police and the police shows up and tells the mullah that removing a, the hijab, not having the hijab, is not illegal. Okay? And she's allowed to not have the oh hijab. <laughs> and they tell the mullah to lower his voice. And apparently, he did not. So they beat the crap out of him. <laughs> and arrest him. Again, we were waiting for updates to see if all of this is accurate. But what I'm telling you is so far what the mullah himself has been saying from his hospital bed like he's been in his house in the hospital and he's recording himself and he's complaining that this is what happened to me that the police i, I tried to do amra bama roof and i has one care on this woman like which is basically the islamic version of vigilante justice which is allowed right and the police told me that it's not only <laughs> to keep my keep you know mind my own business and to keep my voice down and they beat me and they arrested me and now i'm in the hospital so i don't know what's happening this is bizarre uh what i can tell you is that two parts of the story is we know to be almost we almost know for sure almost know for sure that it happened okay because we have recordings of it the mullah was arrested the mullah was hospitalized like we have videos of his arrest and we have videos of him in the hospital uploading videos on social media explaining what happened oh right? my god <laughs> So, so we know these things, um, but what exactly happened that led to all of that? We're waiting for updates because this is bizarre. This is absolutely bizarre. We don't know what's going on in Qom of all places. Qom, I don't know people if you know how religious Qom is. Yeah, e extremely religious. Yeah, yeah, this blew my mind when you first told me this. I I feel like I should try to like reenact my initial reaction because it was something like this. It was like. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't believe you. I was like, they did what to her? <laughs> yeah. And a lot of people are like, a lot of religious people are so angry. They're like, I was watching like religious people, chan Iranian religious channels covering this. Uh, and they were like, this is the end of times. This is, this is the sign of end of times. Everything is upside down. Like you told me that, and I was like, I think they might be right. <laughs> <laughs> no, the guy was like, they're like, what's happening? Is this the end of times? Because like apparently, in the end of times, good becomes evil, and evil, you know. So, um, so they were like, and they were like, we need to find this police and and you know uh, punish the police because how could the police say that this is not illegal? Like they were like, can we send him the law because it's definitely illegal. I had a guess. I don't know if I should guess right now or wait for more information. But I think like it's either if if the police actually told the mullah that it's not illegal to not uh, to not have the hijab. I think maybe the police mis the, that police official misunderstood. I think they t might the higher ups told him not to execute the law right now on the hijab, and his translation of that was that it's not illegal to not. I mean there are. For example, in, there are many laws in Iran that are on the books that are not being executed. So I think they were like just treating this law like that for now because of the protests. And I think maybe the police, either the police misspoke or maybe the mullah misunderstood. Maybe the police said like, oh, we're not going to arrest people for not having a job. And the mullah's understanding was like, oh, it's not illegal. I don't know. But somebody, there's some, you know, there's a 
something is missed in translation here. So we have to see what's going on. That's absolutely wild. I think yeah. there's actually a couple of things that have happened recently that we didn't that are important that we haven't talked about on the show. So I want to like quickly do some catch up. One thing that we didn't talk about, which is actually really good news, is that back in December, the Islamic Republic of Iran was actually officially kicked off of the United Nations Council on the Status of Women which is a huge deal. It's extremely historic because there is no precedent for such a procedure. So the fact that this motion that was carried forward to vote Iran off of the Council on the Status of Women was a huge success, completely unprecedented. Um, and it was actually really fun because I woke up early that morning and I was hanging out in the Atheist Republic Persian Discord and I was streaming it to everyone on the Discord like, on my computer and we were all watching it together like um like waiting to see all the votes and everything and then celebrating when they went off so that was really lovely but um another really important thing that happened is that the famous iranian rapper tumaj salihi he is known as being extremely rebe rebellious and like the voice of the people um and uh like so vehemently and openly critical like he's really a hero um there was a video that came out of him recently the first time that he was seen since his arrest where he was basically in a forced confession and there were signs of torture and beating on his body just like clearly in the video and the authorities even made the forced confession that he was in look like a parody of one of his music videos like that's how yeah. twisted these people are they they did a parody of his own work um yeah. do you i don't understand why they would, no i don't understand what they, like, i don't know if people understand so so too much who's a rapper has a video that um a music video that in that music video he's been arrested and they're doing a forced confession of him right um, and now when he's in real life, when he's actually being arrested, um, the video that the government put out of his interrogation, they made it match his music video. Like they put the cup exactly in the right the same place. You know, the camera work is exactly the same thing. The paper that they put in front of him is like, it's frame by frame. Like it's like they're copying it on purpose. And I'm like, why? I don't understand. Are they like ridiculing him or, or are they like admitting yes. that this is a forced and confession? Because the video, well, the, the music a video was a forced confession. Cool, yeah. But it's a, it, it's a show of power. It's a show of authority. Like, look, your hero that you guys love as being this sign of rebellion. Like when we want to, we can force the monkey to dance. We're going to force you to sit in a play that is a parody of your own forced confession while it's actually a forced confession. Like, Think about the sign of the show of force that that entails psychologically. Yeah, I don't know. That's that's bizarre. These people are sick. I mean, that's the message. The message people actually got was not like, "Oh my God, you're so powerful." The message that people got was like, "You guys are sick." That's the message people got. Yeah. So. And one thing that I guess. actually. Well, people were, whenever these forced confessions come out, like people kind of have a consensus of like, we are not going to show this. And so people were not really sharing um, yeah. Tumaz, Tumaj's forced confession. But in it, he's basically made to say, you know, admit that he's trying to overthrow the regime, admit to his crimes, admit to his revolutionary nature, da, da, da. And one thing that I really loved is like the... Iranian community in general came back and they said, Tumaj confessed to his revolutionary nature, his ideals years ago. And that's why we love him. Like, this is like, this is why we love him. These things that you think are crimes because he's so critical, because he is so deeply conscious of the way in which the state disenfranchises the nation. Like, because his music is very rich with reference that unless you really know how the state power works, deep state power works in Iran, some of the meaning can be really lost on you. Like, he's very consciously aware. 
and so they're like, this is why we love him. These things that you're trying to humiliate him and use to condemn his character are why he, he's our hero. Um, so seeing people take that and flip it on its head, I thought was really beautiful. But I mean, in the face of something that's so horrible, you know, you kind of have to take what you can get. Another, when it comes comes to Tumaj, a really important thing that came out is that he has a, um, oh my God, am I frozen? No, I'm not. He has a political sponsor in Germany. Um, I can't remember her name, but she has adopted him basically as a political sponsor in the sense that like, if the government take, if the Iranian government takes any an action against Tumaj, the idea is that they're answerable to her in her power as a government state official. I mean, a German state official. So she's been putting out information about his case and basically saying it's been 60 days, over 60 days since he was arrested. And the news that we're receiving about the state of his health is really, really concerning. Like I heard some news that he might lose eyesight in one of his eyes. He um, has severely, they've like just broken a ton of his fingers. It, it, he's in a very, very severe medical condition based on the information that we have available. So I just wanted to talk about that because the reason why it's so important to talk about these things is because we need people to post about it. We need people to raise awareness about it because we have seen time and time again that when the international community is paying attention, when we have all of our eyes on specific political prisoners, it does actually make a difference. And so I would like to encourage people to go do some research, maybe about any, maybe Tumaj, maybe a different Iranian political prisoner and just like make a post about their case because it actually does help. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about is that a lot of people have been noticing that over the past few weeks, particularly the last two weeks and until this last Friday, there has been kind of a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A decrease in the amount of demonstrations that we're seeing across Iran. Like, oh, Armin was telling me that in your pro-regime circles that you follow, they're like, oh, what happened to your revolution? Da, da, da. Like, oh, we're so scared because things seem to be petering down. Part of this is due to, um, the weather, the weather conditions that are happening in different cities. And part of this is due to likely the crackdown that happened in Kurdistan and Western Azerbaijan in late November, as well as the executions that took place. And so a lot of people are becoming very discouraged. They're like, um, well, is this it? Is this over? Da, da, da. And I want to um, quote this thing that I heard from uh, a Iranian. Um, podcaster that I listened to, Gian Gomeshi, and he says, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So I want people to, while we care deeply about this cause, like set their expectations accordingly. And just because the Iranian government isn't gone within like a few months, that doesn't mean that this is not something that deserves our continued attention and um, our continued support. Yeah. revolutions are you're getting cut on, we need to uh, it's over a series of years that, yes 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 but we need to move on because your internet is getting worse and we i want to make sure that we finish the news before we uh, lose you completely okay okay you can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free too sexy to show most of it here on youtube we draw muhammad hindu goddesses sexy hijabi art jesus mother mary Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says, get our free blasphemous art.